Hey guys, I'm getting ready to start another micro build and uh, I figured I would throw in some tips in this video to help anyone else out there who might be doing this for the first time or we all do things a little different. This is what has worked for me. Maybe it'll help you out. Um, so before I get started, the first thing I like to do is just get everything purchased and right in front of me. Um, I don't start soldering anything up until uh, I have all of my components already ready to go. Um, yeah, the idea there is that I want to have my layout kind of figured out before I start cutting any wires or applying any solder to any of the components. Um, I, I want to know where everything's going to go, how long each of these wires is going to be. Uh, so I, I get everything in front of me and then I just start kind of playing around with how things are going to fit together. Uh, the next thing I do is I take my flight controller and my ESC and I want to make sure they're good before I put any of my solder on them uh, just in case there's a problem I can send them back they're not going to say hey you know you, you wrecked it with your soldering so what I do is I plug uh, the flight controller in this case it, this is the Zeus which is flight controller and ESC all in one but I'll, I'll plug the flight controller into the USB and I'll flash the latest firmware um, and I'll make sure that uh, it just looks like it's working before uh, I mess with it at all um, I also do the same with the ESC. Uh, I, I use these alligator clips here, and I have a power supply. If you don't have that, uh, you can use the alligator clips and uh, just run them to your battery, but be super careful. Um, I just clipped the alligator clips right on positive and negative here. reason you want to have the power in there is so uh, BL Heli will fire up, and then you can flash whatever firmware you want on your ESCs and you can just confirm that BL Heli is working. So you may have seen I had the zip ties sticking up out of here, that's what these tall things are. Uh, that's my next tip. I like to use a combination of soft mount um, using TPU and these zip ties through the bottom to hold my stack in. In this case the stack is just going to be one board, um, but on this guy you can see the stack was a couple boards. So what I do is I run the zip tie from the bottom through my little TPU spacers and then I put another end of a second zip tie um, on the end of that, just cut really short. Um, I like to do this because you look carefully, you get, you get a little bit of flex in there, um, which is nice because it dampens the vibrations. Also. If you crash, it doesn't transfer all that crash force into your delicate electronics. Uh, I find that in a really, really hard crash, maybe I'll break a zip tie or two. Um, the zip ties that I use are these really small ones. I got a bag of like a thousand of them or something. Uh, these are really cheap and this is like a lifetime supply. Uh, they're kind of nice that they break easily because uh, I'd rather have this break than those forces go into the stack and uh, do worse things. So yeah, occasionally you got to go in and replace them, but it's a lot, a lot easier. The other thing that uh, I like about this is it does save a little bit of weight. Um, I've done, I've done bolts all the way through and you can actually, you can save a couple grams, which adds up on a little quad like this. All right, another thing I like to do is just get my receiver kind of prepped. In this case, I'm using a Spectrum. So I don't like to use the case on the Spectrum. I just removed this plastic housing with two screws, uh, just kind of pried it open. And this is what's inside. It did not have this tape on there. That's what I add. So that's just a little bit of packing tape that I put around the outside. Um, that does a couple things. It helps to hold these antennas in place to keep them from popping out. Uh, it offers a little bit of protection for the, uh, for the electronics there and it prevents this from shorting out on the carbon because I like to put my receivers usually in the bottom near the carbon so you need a little bit of something to keep that the metal of this off of the carbon there. Um, I like to use the clear because you can still see the light through there too. I've done it with uh, other tape and I find clear to be the best. Alright, so I started soldering a few things up. Um, 
And if you're not sure how to solder, there's a million tutorials on that. So I'm not going to really go into that right now. But I do want to point out a couple things that uh, I might do differently. So I solder all of my motor wires pointed outwards. Um, I've done it both ways where you kind of take them inwards and then wrap them back around. I find that outwards works better for me. That way, <clears throat> if I can, if I need to replace a motor, I can do it without having to pull everything apart. It's just a little easier down the road. Also, it saves just a little bit of weight on that extra bit of wire. The other thing that uh, I like to do is on the smaller wires, like you can see on these receiver wires, I solder everything inward. So the wires point inward. Um, I find that that's just a little tidier and it prevents the wire from kind of moving around uh, on the outside, you know, something kind of vibrating or bumping um, and breaking at that solder joint. Uh, it just seems to work a little bit better and look a little bit nicer. Um, yeah, so the, the next thing I'm gonna do now that I've got a, my motors wired up <clears throat> and my receiver wired up, I like to build these things in layers. So uh, I'm gonna go and work on like my power layer, which means I'm gonna take this into uh, Betaflight or Butterflight, which I'm using, and uh, I'm gonna try to get my motors to spool up uh, using the motors tab and make sure everything's going the right direction. Um, and then I'll go into the receiver and I'll set that up next. So um, yeah, like I said, layers, I start with kind of the power layer, just the basic, getting the motors to spin. Um, and then I, I gradually work my way up to um, receiver and then um, the next is gonna be camera and VTX. All right, moving on to VTX. I like to use this style. Uh, they're very lightweight. This is the uh, 25 to 200 milliwatt switchable. I'm sure there's a few companies making them. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for this video uh, if you're interested. Basically, I like them because they're, uh, they're not very expensive and they work fine. Range is pretty good uh, and they're very light. So, and the other thing I like about this style in particular is the way that they've got this part sticking out, you can put a little bit of heat shrink around that and it really keeps that connector where it's supposed to be. You can see on this one over here, I've done it. Um, so the only thing I don't like about these is the antenna that they come with is a little short for the builds that I like to do. Um, so I swap it out with one that's just a little bit longer. The reason I do that is if you look at the completed one here, um, I'm trying to get that antenna up as high as I can because I've got the battery right next to it there and that creates kind of a shadow, or like a RF shadow uh, if your antenna is right up against that battery or below it. So I try to get the antenna as far away and I would even like to probably go a little higher if I could, but these are the longest ones that I, I could find that were already pre-made. Um, and they do work better. I've, I've tested them back to back and I can tell the difference. So that's, that's one mod I would definitely do. Uh, if you're running a top mount battery, if you're running a bottom mount battery on your setup, it doesn't matter as much. Uh, yeah, so the, the next thing is how I actually mount the VTX into the frame. And you can kind of see on this completed one what I like to do. Um, you can 3D print something. There's a lot of different ways you can mount it, but I like to use uh, zip ties in this way. Actually, before I get into that, one other thing. I run a heatsink on, on this. It does not come with this. This is a heatsink from, um, I believe it's the Arduino. It comes in a two pack with a big one and a little one like this. This little one fits nicely over the chip right here, which gets really hot. And this does a nice job of dissipating the heat. Um, there's a little sticky 3M on the back of this that holds it in place okay if it's on an Arduino, but not if you're flying it around in a copter. So what I like to do is, you can see it on here, I zip tie all the way around the thing and I hold that uh, heat sink in place. And this, the zip tie going around actually holds the heat sink in place and then helps kind of work in with the other zip ties to make a little mount. So you can see how I go around the posts here uh, and create like a little shelf for the VTX to sit on and then it sits loosely, so I can set this down and wiggle it. You can see that kind of moves around in there just a little bit. And I like that because I like to have 
the VTX secured firmly on the antenna. Back here you can actually see it a little better on this one. Uh, that's reasonably tight and then everything else from here down is loose. So what I want to do is not concentrate any force on the connector there because that's where these things will break. If you do it this way they don't break. Um, I've never had one break actually when it's been loose like this and tight right there. So yeah I, I secure the VTX going this way with cable ties and I do the same kind of deal on the other side for the antenna. Um, and like I said, this is the only real tight spot. The other thing I like to do, you can see on this one, is I run some heat shrink on it, but this heat shrink, there's a cable tie going along the antenna here, uh, which kind of keeps it in this position. I use a heat gun to bend this cable tie and to get this heat shrink on there, but I don't shrink it tight. So this heat shrink, if I can get in there, this will actually slide around a bit. And this is tough. Here we go. So you can see that that cable, that cable tie and the antenna are held together, but really loosely by the heat shrink. Um, and that's important because if you heat shrink really tight your antenna to a cable tie and everything is tight, tight, tight back there, what happens is you crash, you hit the antenna and it acts like a lever against that little connector and this little guy, you will break them if things are too tight. If you keep it loose and have only one spot right down at the bottom there where things are secured tight, then they won't break. All right, I'm just wrapping it up. I got the motors soft mounted with their guards and all my wiring is finished here. Mounted the VTX, like I mentioned before. Um, one other thing, the antennas, I like to do them this way. Um, this is a shout out to Joshua Bardwell. This was his tip, except he had them going kind of the other way on the back arms. I like to to do the antennas this way so that um, it's less likely to get hung up in something as it's going through. But basically this is just a zip tie um, with some shrink wrap and the antenna going in there. Yeah, the only last thing I wanna do is put a little bit of blue Loctite on those screws because since they're soft mounted, these are not going to be very tight. Uh, yeah, good to go.